I start up here at the top and pull around this corner like so. So it was a similar technique where you start more stood up and as I rotated around I start laying the knife down as the mud comes off of it. Now I'm going to show you how to coat corner bead. As you can see, this one's already been coated once. It's just one coat. Corner bead normally needs two coats. And the normal sequence is to use a seven inch knife on the first coat and then move up to a 10 inch knife. <clears throat> so we've already got the first one done. So we're ready to move on to the second coat. So what I'm gonna do is just show you how we do that second coat. Now in between coats, you want to go around and lightly scrape all the surfaces to get the little bits of mud that dried and left behind. And then these lap marks, you can sand them or scrape them. So just get the surface, sand it or scrape, and then it's ready to coat. Now, I guess I actually will keep this handy because We'll coat the inside with a six. But basically the principle is kind of similar to a lot of things <clears throat> that we do. We're going to load the knife, throw some mud on the floor. You gotta leave your mark. And what I do is I start up here at the top and pull around this corner like so. So it was a similar technique. We start more stood up and as I rotate it around, I start laying the knife down as the mud comes off of it. Taper it. And then on square bead, you'll usually wanna go ahead and coat the other side right now because it's gonna roll over onto this one or coat one side at a time, then come back after it's dry and do the other. That'd be a way that you could do it. And I would normally take that all the way around, but we're just showing you the technique here so grab the six and we're gonna do kind of the same thing, load the knife. Now for these, what I do is I, I, I don't even have to think about it. I just grab, it's just like automatic when I load. I load it, you can see it's nice and clean so I didn't get this big drippy mess out and then it gets a ton all over the windows. Yeah, you could mask these off but the problem with masking is if you get your masking a little deep and the mud ends up on top of it, then you've got to cut the masking everywhere and try and get it out. And the masking tape sometimes still shows through. So what we do is we just go ahead and coat it. And at the end, we can go through and just scrape the drywall mud off, sand it a little bit, maybe wipe it down. It comes off pretty easy. So I'll try not to get it in my mud here. But that's for the final step. So since we're just ready to coat again, we load the knife, which all I'm doing is pulling it out and then I'm wiping it across my pan essentially. So load the knife, start up here and do the usual technique of lean and go over as you come, come through the pass. So once you get a decent coat on there, you can just turn around and notice that these knives, they generally have basically a 90 degree angle right here. This one's actually pretty worn out, but still got a basic 90 degree angle. So you pay attention to how you put that into the angle because if you got it nice and square, you get a nice square. Um, your knife is in there nice and square. And what it does is it tends to wipe off some of the mud over here, which you want. But on the second step, it may actually pull some of this debris out of here. So you may actually tilt it away just slightly. And I do mean just slightly enough where you're not digging that dry mud back into your mud. Or you could scrape it in between steps if that's easier for you. But in the interest of speed, I, d I like to do it one time, so. You can see there, I'll show you a close up here, the final result, but it's nice and smooth in there. And then because that rolled over, like I said, let's just show that again. 
You almost always get some that rolls over like that. So after you've made your final wipe, take a little bit of that off so that it doesn't roll back onto the inside. So now you've done those two steps. You come out here, put in medium pressure, trying to wipe the metal clean. You don't really want to leave a buildup layer. See if I can show that down here. And you don't really want to leave that metal buried because it can cause you complications. So as you come around here, you're wiping it medium tight for the second coat because you're just, you're not trying to put it on very heavy at this stage. And that's pretty much what you want it to look like. And again, I rolled some over on purpose there, but then just go along here, pick up the heavy stuff, and then the rest will send off when you're done. A little, a few pointers. You're, you're basically, you're looking to flatten that surface out because normally this wall comes over to your corner bead and then it kind of comes out to the corner, which is what gives you the area to fill in here. So you're trying to fill it to the point where when you put your knife on here, it's pretty flat and it, that way it's not going to look like big humps everywhere. And that's if you put your corner bead on right and don't have to build it up real wide. Remember, practice, practice, practice. This is not an easy thing to do. I'm showing you some of the more advanced things beyond repairing simple holes in that. But practice, spend some time watching these videos multiple times and maybe it'll help you get the, the hang of it. So that's the basics of corner bead. If you've got any questions, ask us in the comments. We'll be glad to try and answer them. I hope that helps you with the corner bead. Well, I've got to get back to work. I got mud drying on the wall and I got a whole house. I got to coat about 50 sticks of corner bead in here. So I'd better get busy. I'll see you on the next video.